Thank you, Michael. So if you would like to join in the session, uh, the web address is given on screen. It's nearpod.com. You're then prompted for a code for the session, and it's given on screen, USPGN. So I'll leave that there just for a few seconds uh, to allow people to log in, and then we will uh, commence the session. As has been said, all responses are anonymous to each other. Um, as leader of the group, obviously I can see what's going on and, and so on, but everything else is anonymous uh, to each other uh, within the session. So nearpod.com and then USPGN is the code. You're prompted for a username. You can put anything in there. If you don't want to identify yourself, just put ABC or something like that. And that allows you access then to the presentation. Okay, so I want to uh, commence the session this afternoon uh, just by outlining to you some of the research, uh, or should I say practice, in terms of uh, work that we've been doing at Ulster University, looking at many of the interactive tools that can be used to enhance higher education and to support our students. I want to mention at the start William Crow, one of the research associates who also assisted with some of this work. Of course, the ideal scenario for our students, and of course, as a practitioner at Ulster University, I'm thinking primarily of our students within the School of Biomedical Sciences, but even beyond that, within higher education, within Northern Ireland, we're thinking of ways in which we would like to engage our students in the learning process. The ideal scenario is small groups of maybe five or six students uh, sitting together with a tutor and learning that way. More realistically though, this is the type of scenario which we're faced with, large lecture theatres, which is great because we're seeing many students now engaging in higher education. Our widening participation strategies are beginning to take hold and we've got more and more students joining us through the likes of FE routes, access courses and so on. But this then presents a challenge. How do we interact with our students? How do we engage them in the learning process? And essentially the pedagogic approach that I like to take is one of active learning and it's one that has been postulated for a number of years as one of the best ways of engaging students and I suppose the definition that's supplied there is involves students in doing things and thinking about the things that they are doing so we're moving away from that didactic learner teacher mode where the teacher delivers and the student listens can we enhance that active learning process within our lecture theatres Shirley Dugdale in 2009 made this statement that campuses really need to have a participatory architecture, thinking about the physical learning spaces within our institutions, but also embracing what is mentioned here as the emerging virtual space. And I believe that that emerging virtual space can be really utilised to the full whenever we look at many of the technologies that are available to us. There's many ways that we can engage students within those large lecture contexts, and this has been done for many, many years, through video, questions, problems, uh, activities within lectures. Some people even have audience response systems, and in many regards, some also use theatre. I know of one colleague in another institution who puts on almost a performance to illustrate very specific points within the sciences. What I am doing today is illustrating to you one particular tool, which is Nearpod. Nearpod is a cloud-based audience response system and it allows you to engage your students actively in class. One of the requirements, of course, is Wi-Fi. So we need a good uh, broadband, we need good Wi-Fi connectivity. And that's, of course, something that is pressing right across our community. Uh, how do we engage people even in rural communities and so on? Because one of the advantages with all of this is that you don't have to be in the room at the time when the lecture is being delivered. Using other technologies, uh, conferencing technologies, this can be done even remotely and people can engage from a distance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a question and one of those first questions I'm going to ask quite simply is have you used audience response systems before? Now by definition of audience response system, it could be a clicker, it could be holding up a card, it could be holding up your hand. As I say to people, this is a digital audience response system when you hold up your hand. It's another way of responding. And really, to be honest, the technique is not what is important. Many times it's the underlying exercise that you're asking the student to engage in, 
whether it's problem solving, whether it's voting on something, whether it's expressing an opinion. So I've got a number of people who've now responded and I can uh, share out <coughs> that response. So hopefully on your screen you'll now see immediately we have some research data already before us and in terms of who's used it before, who hasn't uh, and so on. That then allows me as a lecturer to perhaps begin a discussion with students if that's a particular point of view that's being expressed or whatever but that is quite normal in terms of audience response systems even some of the more up-to-date digital systems also provide that level of access. But what about going one stage further and asking perhaps a more detailed question? This is one of the collaboration tools that's available within this particular system. Ask the question, which audience response system have you used previously? And perhaps list uh, each one of those on screen. So what should happen here, if it all works, um, is I should now begin to receive responses from the group. And uh, I'm keeping an eye on this, just so that everybody's behaving themselves. Um, so quite a number of responses appearing on screen and in the usual manner of social networking you can like someone else's response as well if you agree with them then it's possible to uh, click the little button there as well and as it were upvote that particular one so lots of different uh, viewpoints coming forward there what can we use this with our students for I'm a chemist by training and I teach first year chemistry uh, naming compounds. Ask a student to provide the name of a particular compound or what is a reagent needed for a particular reaction and so on. So we can engage students by getting them to actively participate uh, within a session and to provide responses. And just one final um, exercise as well, uh, just to keep everyone engaged. This particular one coming up on screen now provides another aspect in terms of what we can do Annotate the map to indicate your current location. So hopefully you know where you are uh, at this particular point. Now you may wonder why I've asked this question. Um, it was mentioned earlier about Twitter. And of course, as I said, you don't have to be within the room to actually participate. So I have sent the link to Twitter to see if anyone is listening in. And perhaps someone can annotate on the map from a distance and tell us where they might be. But it illustrates the point, and I've utilized the tool this way before, where we have conducted an online training session and colleagues have been in European cities, been within uh, cities within Scotland and England, and I'm sitting in my office in Coleraine conducting the session over another conferencing tool, the likes of uh, Collaborate or some of those other tools that are available. So again, it's possible to uh, share out the response and on my screen at the moment, I have a palette of all the responses received. And this seems to be the consensus so far. So most people are uh, resident uh, within the confines of the building at the present time. And this is a fantastic way of getting feedback from students. Draw the structure of a compound. Annotate on the diagram which part of the body uh, has this particular bone structure. You can ask students to annotate that and provide back a response. And this is a way by which, uh, as a lecturer, as a practitioner, I am able then to gauge the learning of my students. As I said before, the real pedagogy here, the underlying pedagogy, is active learning. And the tool, and I should, of course, say that this is only one of many audience response systems that are available. There are other tools available, but within our studies, what we have discovered is that this particular one uh, fulfills all the criteria that we need uh, as we seek to deliver material to our students. We've implemented this at Ulster University in a variety of modules taken by students mainly within the STEM area. So the likes of pharmaceutical analysis, introductory chemistry and other uh, modules. So we've been looking for responses back from our students and there's a lot of uh, evaluative data within the briefing paper, but really the top line is that students really enjoy the engagement that the tool brings. And certainly whenever a pin is released, there's a, usually a very high response rate. Students log in, in around 84% of students in the room will log in and begin to engage. 
and they give us this feedback that they are able to engage better. It's a, a much more easy way to learn uh, the material that's been presented to them. We do get some negative comments, and maybe perhaps even this has been your experience as well today, that sometimes using smaller screens can be difficult, and in some cases as well, looking back through the previous slides. So I should say that Nearpod at the present time, if you click this little arrow at the top on your screen, it allows you to take notes as you go. So you're able then to annotate notes about the slides as we go through the presentation, and that will then be emailed to you as a PDF document uh, at the end of the session. Over the last year or two, we've really uh, upscaled this in terms of students within our introductory chemistry module. So we've got around 170 this year, about 190 students on that particular module, and we've used Nearpod as a means of enhancing the lecture experience of our students. We've had very few technical issues. And of course, that really goes back to the fundamental aspect of having good Wi-Fi connectivity, good infrastructure uh, within our buildings. And these are some of the responses that we have received back from students. Some of them uh, draw on the palette itself and give us back uh, their answer to a particular question. And in this particular case, the student has drawn out their response on a piece of paper. It doesn't matter what way they do it. They then take a picture of it and then send that picture uh, back to the lecturer. And as you can see from our word cloud here. This is from our online module survey, which did not specifically ask about Nearpod, but just the student experience on the module. And we were keen to get that feedback from the students. What was, or what did you feel was particularly good about the module? And again, Nearpod features quite well uh, in that particular regard. That's engaging students inside the class, but what about engaging students with material outside the confines of the lecture? And what we find is that students have a particular number of scheduled hours of lecturing, but then they have time when they can go away and do their own personal and private study. And what we wanted to do was try to add some structure to that, to help students collaborate better together, and in many regards to review the material straight after the lecture. So we use a tool called Peerwise. And Peerwise is essentially social networking with multiple choice questions. So again, the activity is entirely anonymous and students are given a PIN number to access the area on Peerwise and then they can begin to contribute. And we ask our students to supply one multiple choice question based on the material that's delivered each week. We ask them then to also answer questions supplied by their colleagues within the group and to rate and to comment on them. So all those social networking functions that students are used to um, they can engage with in peer ways. They build up a reputation score, so the more they interact with it, the more they build up this score. They earn badges, so a question author badge, a question answerer badge. Uh, there's a follower badge, because people can follow them if they like their type of and style of questioning. And there even goes to an obsessed and a legend badge as well, as they interact more and more with peer ways. There's a large body of literature now around Peerwise and a number of advantages have been articulated uh, by colleagues in other institutions. Certainly increases student engagement. We've seen that in our own work as well. Scalable for large groups, up to six or seven hundred students accessing it. It enhances digital capability and in some cases results in higher academic attainment. Now we haven't necessarily seen that in our work yet. In some years it does seem to have a significant increase in other years it doesn't. But this recent paper by Hancock says that their study showed that students who engage with it, their marks go up by about 4% um, overall. So to give you an idea of our own students uh, being involved in this, again they're drawn from School of Biomedical Sciences and Pharmacy, enrolled on a biochemistry module, and I've just mentioned to you the sorts of activity we ask them to do. Write one question, answer three, comment on two, and we give them a few coursework marks for engaging and we check their activity uh, in weeks 8 and week 12 of semester. One of the other things that we do as an incentive is actually ask them, and say, look, you're going to be writing questions potentially for your summative class tests. So I select some of these questions and put them into our summative class tests um, in semester in weeks 5 and 10. 
to give you a scale of engagement of how students have interacted with it, just one snapshot, the year 2014-15. By the end of semester, 2,100 questions written, 25,000 questions answered, and almost 4,800 comments posted. Now, many of those comments can be social, just nice question, like that question, but others go into much more detail. And students actually help each other. This is how I learn amino acids. This is how I work out hydrophobic from hydrophilic and all those sorts of things. And it's very nice to see that collaboration happening. Albeit that's the students who are at the top end of the activity uh, on the module. And you can see, obviously, the incentive uh, is there to revise for, for example, class test one. So this is just uh, activity across the semester and number of answers submitted on any particular day. So almost 3,000 uh, on the day before class test one and good activity around class test two as well. Now the students were told there will be no peer-wise questions on the sessional exam, but even around this period, there's quite a lot of activity as students use the tool to prepare for their examinations. Again, going back to the, the data in terms of our module feedback, What's one of the best things about this module? And again, Peerwise features heavily in that particular regard. We get a lot of positive comments from students. They enjoy it. They like the competitiveness of the process as well. And it makes them able to ask questions of each other. And they can ask for feedback even on some of the questions that they have written as well. This is the one token negative comment. And to be honest, I think in the year, that uh, these comments derive from. This was the only negative comment uh, in that particular regard. So where does this all tie together in terms of strategy and what we're seeking to do? The JISC tracker study, which is conducted across a large number of universities throughout the UK, asks students about their digital experience at university. Ulster University is no different. We take part in that survey also. And Sarah Knight from JISC basically concluded that it's very clear that students want the same convenience that they get from using digital in their day-to-day -day lives at university. But what they don't want is a whole slew of different technologies used in different ways. They want it to be strategic, and they want it to make sense, they want it to be purposeful. And therefore, that's something that needs to be borne in mind as we seek to develop uh, these different technological approaches. Recommendations really from the studies that we have done so far, and we have a couple of case studies published in terms of the work that we've done to date. It should be seen technology, digital technology, as an enabler, as a means to augment and assist students in their learning. University departments need to be listening to our students, the student voice, what technologies are they interested in, what are they using, what devices do they have, because obviously today, within the room, you were engaging using your own device. Within our study of Nearpod, we supplied tablet devices if students needed to avail of one of those as well. So there are some resource implications there as well. But exposing students to a range of carefully chosen digital tools does enhance their digital capability, their digital skills, their practical digital skills and literacies. But support for staff, of course, and all of that is needed as well. And I've also had conversations with Andy Jaffrey, who is our head of digital uh, learning at Ulster. And some of the things that he would face, uh, more from an institutional central point of view, is agility and procurement. How easily can we buy in these new technologies? Many times they arrive on the scene very quickly, and we need to have agile procurement processes. It's one thing having somebody like me in a school uh, doing some of this work. How do we scale it up across an institution and beyond? Learner analytics as well, we've heard a lot today already in terms of how to look at different uh, behaviours and so on, but can we track people through the process in terms of how they learn, how their background affects their performance and so on, and even build in the likes of data from Peerwise, from Nearpod, from these other tools as well. And the whole goal, of course, in the spirit of ethics and openness, is to support our students to achieve their best uh, when they come to university. Some acknowledgements at the end there, particularly to uh, Richard Beggs and Andy Jaffrey for all their support uh, of this type of work at Ulster. Thank you.